Yeah. But here I think that um, he's um, saying what Moses has said. Help me, Lord. Uh, help me to, to speak to my kinsmen according to the flesh. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Let's have a look at, uh, a little more closely at the things that he was talking here. What, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption? What's the significance of the word adoption? Yeah. We were adopted um, by God according to the promise. So there's number one, an adoption. And the glory. What would they have to say about the glory? Being in the family of God? In their history, God has revealed himself in glory to them. Yes. Where, would, where did that happen, first of all? Yeah. Sanctuary services. Yeah. We, we could go back to Jacob, lying with a stone as a pillow, probably back to Abraham. But um, uh, more particularly, he's talking to the Israelites that he was writing his letter to, Israelites in Rome. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants what were the covenants that he's talking about? The Ten Commandments? It's covenants, not commandments. Temple worship. The Testaments. Yeah, that, that's more like Ten Commandments, isn't it? And the giving of the law, well, there you are, that sort of settles it, doesn't it? And the giving of the law, it follows. And the service of God, was he in the service of God? I think he believed he was doing the service of God. And I think that Paul believed that he was doing the service of God before he was actually doing the service of God. In fact, he says so later on in the chapter, doesn't he? And he was uh, persecuting the church uh, before he was converted and he thought at that time that he was doing the service of God. And then when God appeared to him on the way to Damascus, he had the opportunity to think very rapidly about following Christ and um, uh, believing that Christ was his saviour. Could you say that he was compelled? In, compelled in what? Do you think he was compelled? Do, do you feel compelled to follow Christ? I see this. When you're convicted, you want to follow Christ? When the time comes that you fully understand what Christ did for you, he died on Calvary he, for, the loss, for the forgiveness of your sins, you feel as if it's good to follow him. Who's been through that experience? Put your hand up if you've been through that conversion experience. Yeah, yeah. That's good, isn't it? Because you can believe in Christ and then follow him. Um, and the promises, the service of God and the promises. Number five, whose are the fathers? And of whom as concerning the flesh. Christ came, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. It sounds like a bit of poetry there. Would someone like to say something about it? Whose are the fathers and of whom are, as concerning the flesh? Where, uh, Christ in the flesh came, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. 
do you in your Christian experience, do you believe that you have the promises of God forever? Mm -hmm. what, what, what can you refer to in the Bible to prove your, your belief? Yeah, yeah. Once, once you've made that connection with Christ, He promises never to leave you or to forsake you. Yeah, and and uh, forever, everlasting life. So when I believe in Christ, I have everlasting life, and that everlasting life lasts forever, and I don't need to worry about it anymore. No. Yes. We, we have to die how often? Daily. Daily. Yes. In fact, Ellen White says we should pray every minute. Let your life be a prayer to God. The soft... Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. That, that quiet um, prayer to God is appreciated by God because... It's, it's a continual connection that you can have with him. Do you have that experience in your life? Ask yourself the question. Yes. And then it says, Amen. What does Amen mean? So be it. So be it. Right. So he's saying, what's hap what he's saying in those first five verses, he's saying, this is good, this is right. So be it. Now, verse number six. Not as though the word of God hath taken of none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. What sort of gobbledygook does this say? They're not all descended from Israel. Not all descended to who is Israel? Who is Israel? Abraham's seed. Yes, Abraham's seed. But when did the name Israel come into being? It's Jacob. Jacob, on the way back from wherever he was. And, and uh, at the night before, was it the night before he met uh, his brother? No, it was was the that? Night he met yeah. Brother. Was that not the time that God said, Your name shall no more be um, Jacob, it'll be Israel? Yeah. We, we, we continue to call him uh, Jacob. No, he fought with the... Hey, did he fight the angel then or on the way up? No, no, that's when he fought. Yes, that's when he fought the angel. Yes, yes. And um, he's talking here about people who are not all of Israel, which are of Israel. Can you be Israel and not be Israel at the same time? Spiritual Israel. And I, I wondered why that word spiritual is, wasn't used a few times in this, in this chapter. It might have made it a little more clear because um, y y you have to think twice about who those Israels are referring to. All right. Does anybody have any, another version that might clarify that to us? Verse 6. Yeah, that puts it in a plain sort of a situation, doesn't it? He's not calling them spiritual Israel yet, but he's, he's saying that there are some who uh, say they're Israel, think they're in the family of God, but aren't. That's not you. Right. They weren't spiritual of Israel. Right. In fact, the chapter here says, I think that, that the Lord hated them. What does it say up there? Is the word hate in that? Hardeneth. Hardeneth. Who's, who's other? Who else was hardened? Heart was hardened. Pharaoh. Yeah, and then the, the commandments. Um, all right, now we've got these two types of Israel. Genuine Israel, who worship God, love him, accept Jesus Christ as their saviour. And they, <coughs> sorry, those who 
you might call Gentiles, who, who, who come in and um, may pretend to be Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. What's Paul saying here? Yes. When, when did it start? When did Israel start to accept other peoples into their church life? When did it start? Ruth, you're talking about there, yeah. Was Ruth the first one? Rahab? There was Rahab. Israel, who at least when they came out in the Red Sea, that time there were other people that included. Yeah, think of all the Egyptians that came yes. with them. Nigel, did you have something to say? Yeah, I was going to say, didn't they start when they actually left Egypt? Yes, when, they the when, when they left Egypt, yes, all, all those Egyptians came with them. The strange mob. Some of, some of them, no doubt, became genuine Christians. And there were others, I think, uh, that, that came. We're not told about every, every convert that they made. But, and, and then in the uh, New Testament times, in the household of, of what was his name? The Roman centurion? Cornelius. Cornelius? Yes. Um, I think the habit of accepting non-Jewish people as spiritual Israel really commenced there for the New Testament. If you disagree, please tell me. Yeah, the Christian church. What should our attitude be to non-Israelites nowadays? Should our attitude be that non-Israelites can become spiritual Israelites? How many of you here claim Jewish heritage, ancestry? Just the one? Yeah, right. And, and this is a promise, that this, this is something that exists today. You, you folk who have newly come into the church, you, you're not national Israelites, but you're spiritual Israelites. You become members of the body of Christ, adopted into the family of God. And if you're adopted by God, what does that make your relationship with Jesus? Brother, yes. Brothers and sisters of Jesus. And um, what does Jesus do as a reward to us for accepting him as our spiritual brother? He gives us eternal life. It's so simple. This is the story of salvation, isn't it? The Holy Spirit, yeah, yeah. Um, neither because they are the seed of Abram are they all children... But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Um, so Isaac was the blessing, blessed child from Abraham. That is, verse eight. That is, they which are the children of the family of the flesh; these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. How do you become a child of the promise? Huh? Become a member of a spiritual Israel. Love God. Believe Jesus. Rely on his promise of sin forgiveness. Accept his sacrifice for you. <clears throat> and a person who is a genuine spiritual Israel is just as much Israel as the national is Israels. Well, 
Come on, Jan, tell us what is the problem. The children of the promise are counted for the seed. Yes. Is there. Yeah, they wanted a, a literal king who could save them from their enemies. That's what they wanted, wasn't it? All the Israelites were, uh, were God's children. True. True, there were. There were a lot of people mentioned in the Bible who were Jews, Hebrews, and uh, they were not true to God at all. Right. Now, where are we? Verse... Um, 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 um. Counted for the seed. The children of the promise are counted for the seed. Counted for the seed. What's the significance of that phrase? Counted for the seed. They're considered the descendants of, of Abraham. Um, counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. And what son was that? What was his name? Isaac. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. Rebekah, we're going back further in history again. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to the election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Can you re you've got a different version there, Jan, haven't you? Can you read that text so that we can all hear it? Sure. Number 11. For before the children were born, or had done anything, either good or bad, uh, in order that God's election and purpose might stand, based, on their action, based not on their action, but on his calling them. Him that that calleth. Who's calling who here? God's calling who? People. Us. But what about the works? Right. Who, what, what was the works that they had to perform before Christ came in Old Testament times? The, the sacrificial law was something that, the, that they had to follow. This, this made up, I think, the majority of the works that the people had to perform before Jesus came. When Jesus came, died on the cross, rose again, went to heaven... Um, what are the works that his brethren have to do now? And sisters, it's all inclusive. What are the works you have to do now? All you have to do is accept, isn't it? Yes. And uh, you can go about uh, uh, giving as much, many cups of cold water to as many hungry, thirsty children or clothing for their feet. You can as many as that of your life as you like, but that's not going to get you to heaven. What's going to get you to heaven? Believe in the Lord. Pardon? Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. And that results, doesn't it? When you believe in the Lord, that results in those works 
which um, come from knowing Jesus. <clears throat> right. Now that was verse what? That was verse 11. Uh, it was said unto her, who's her? Which was the her re- revealing, uh, referring to? Rebecca. Rebecca. Who's, whose wife was Rebecca? How many, uh, how many wives did, did he have? One. Just the one that we know of. Isaac. Hey? Isaac had only one wife. Isaac only had one wife that we know of, and that was Rebecca, was it? Yeah. yeah. She was the one who was found at the well, wasn't that right? Yeah. And who was the one who had all the sons, all the wives and all the sons and all the children? That was Jacob, yes, yes. Um, it was said unto her, Rebecca, the elder shall serve the younger. Now, what, what's this referring to? The elder shall serve the younger. Yes, Jacob and Esau, where did they come from? They were twins from Rebecca. And the Lord said to Rebecca, the younger will? No, the older will serve the younger. The elder shall serve the younger. Do you have any instances in the Bible where the older served the younger in that context? Now, we're not down to Joseph yet. No, but he, he, it was Manasseh that was the eldest. They said yeah. to him, got the blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, what about um, Esau and Jacob? Have we got any examples where the older served the younger? What about the day of the pottage? Was that fitting into this? Jacob and Esau. Yeah. Did the older serve the younger there? It seemed to me as if the younger ripped the older off. Yeah. Because what did he take from the older? What's more important, Jacob taking the heritage or Esau yielding the heritage? What's, what's greater in God's sight? Does, does, is that a fulfilment of this prophecy that the older shall, shall serve the younger? A beginning of that, in, in, yes. And, and what about uh, later on in life? In, later on in life, do we have an example of that happening again? Where the uh, older served the younger? Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. And 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 when Jacob came back with all his retinue of servants and his animals and his family and what was he expecting? From Esau, what was he expecting? He was expecting a very, very severe. Yes. And that was the night, remember, that he, he wrestled uh, with the, uh, the angel. Yeah. And what about when he met Esau? What was Esau's attitude to Jacob? Jacob was afraid of Esau, but what was Esau's attitude? Who, who was going with, with Esau to meet Jacob? His army. His army. <laughs> he was going to smite them hip and thigh, I suppose. And, and then the Lord stepped in. The Lord stepped in to Esau. And uh, what did he say? Don't do any harm to Jacob. And um, I suppose... Pose. I don't know whether I'm stretching things, but I seem to remember reading somewhere in Ellen White's books that Esau and Jacob 
had a very amiable relationship after this for the rest of their lives. And Esau was quite happy to be acknowledged Jacob as the one with the birthright. He wasn't interested in the spiritual things. He was interested in the, the, the army that he had. And uh, he left over to, to um, Jacob uh, the idea of being the spiritual leader of, of the clan. Now, verse 12, It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, verse 13, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Esau hated by God. What does yours say, Jan? An enemy which he hated. Yeah, I didn't think that God hated people. I I always thought that God loved even sinners, and He loved them so much that He sent His Son down to die for them. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. Mm. Was, was Esau the only person that, that we could say was disliked, as it were, by God? Was he the first one, do you think? What about Cain? He was thinking of Cain so much that he made, made a, something on his forehead or something, didn't he? Yeah, so that he would be recognised as Cain. And this word hardness is, um, up, comes up in this, um, in this chapter and uh, that one hated comes up a few times. It's interesting that Paul here thinks that God has his favourites. Would you agree there? That he has his favourites. From the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right. But the, the, the Bible says that the Lord hardened his heart. Yes. Um, it's... Innocent blood. The, the devisor of wicked plans. These are the things that God hates. Liars. One who sows discords. Yeah, these are the things that, that God, hates. God hates. Yes. Right here. Um, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? This is verse 14. What shall we say then? And question mark. Is there unrighteousness with God? No. And what does it say? God forbid. What, what does Paul mean by that very definite God forbid? God still gives them the same chance. Yes. The they still get the same chance to accept Christ. No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. For he saith to Moses, verse, verse 15, For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Hands up those who believe in their lives have received compassion from God. I oh, ought to put two hands and feet up. <laughs> to those of you who couldn't put your hand up, you've got something good ahead of you because the Lord um, treats you with compassion and you must believe that as, as you love God, as you become the, the brother or the sister of Jesus, that, that he has compassion on you. Compassion being love, care. What else? Love and care and what else would be in that word compassion? Kindness, mercy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Verse 16. What's the time? So then it is not him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. It's not Moses who shows mercy. It's God that shows the mercy. Is that what it's referring to? Moses did, in fact, show mercy to the children of Israel, didn't he? And I wondered... Um, what, what would have happened in, in, at Sinai, Sinai when he went into the mountain and he got the, the tables of stone and all the things happened up there and uh, I suppose they were, they were, of course, written down sometime later, we don't know how long, and Moses would have had some interesting things to say to the Israelites then, wouldn't he, about the compassion of God. Yeah, yeah. It's the desire of God that all men and women be saved. And he, he, he has made the provision for us to be saved. And, and that is what we've mentioned a few times, believing on Jesus as a son. Yes. Yes. Is God merciful to everybody? His mercy is available to everybody. His mercy is available to everybody. His mercy is part of his compassion. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, here we are, we're in Pharaoh, we've talked about Pharaoh already. Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will he hardeneth. And that's more or less a repetition of that verse 16 that we've just read. Thou wilt say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? Question mark. For who hath resisted his will? Question mark. Nay, but O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Question mark. Shall the thing formed say to the him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honour and another vessel unto unto dishonour. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath 
fitted to destruction. Yes. What's Paul telling us here? Pardon? Predestination? Yeah, some people might put it that way. Some people might. And, and, he, and he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. God's mercy, um, as it were, in a vessel, waiting as part of his glory that he shares with his children. Am I talking rubbish or are you agreeing with me? <laughs> um, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Ah, now he's saying it so that I can understand it. He's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. Is this the first time the word Gentiles appear? It is in the chapter, I think. And what's a Gentile? A non-Jew. A non-Jew. <laughs> yes. And he's talking here about the, the, the Jews and the non-Jews, but also the Gentiles. What do Gentiles become when they accept Christ? Yes, Member of, of spiritual Israel, part of the body of Christ. This is what they become when they accept Jesus Christ as their saviour. Today? God gives mercy to whom he chooses. Yeah. Do, does this change about happen today? Can it happen today? Or was it only applicable there? Of course it happens today. I wouldn't be sitting here if it, if it didn't happen today, nor would you, I don't think. This is the gospel story. Now, we're on verse 25. As he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and, has, and her beloved, which was not beloved. What's O.C.? Who's O.C.? Who's that referring to? Hosea the prophet, Hosea the prophet yes. And um, I don't know why he can't use their proper name. <laughs> yes. Um, in, in the um, concordances, it, it explains that as being Hosea, Hoshea, and there's another one. Um, I've forgotten. Never mind. It's written down in my pamphlet somewhere, I should think. Whew. Where are we now? Verse 25. Let's do that one again. As he saith also in Hoshi, I will call them my people which were not my people, her beloved which was not beloved, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, If ye are not my people, there shall be called the children of the living God. Ye are not my people, there shall be called, there shall they be called the children of the living God. I think the Adventists are the only religion who talk about their living God. Is, is there any other religion that anybody knows about who talks about their living God? Hey? No student of churches? I, I think that I learnt somewhere in my learning that that was right. Pardon? I don't know. Anyway, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. Isaiah comes into it now. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. This, this remnant, what's a remnant? Pieces left over, scrap. Yeah. A small, a, small a small part of the original, yeah. Are we the remnant? Are we part of that remnant? How many millions of people are going to be in that remnant? Don't know, do we? Is it 144,000? <laughs> thousands of thousands, yes. It's going to be a big remnant to us in terms of numbers. Um, 
and here it says, though the numbers in total of Israel are as of the sands of the sea. Are as of the sands of the sea. Who got the promise that he would have descendants as numerous as the sands of the sea? Abraham got it. Somebody else got it. I think Jacob got that promise too, didn't he? Yes. And these were the men, the patriarchs, who came down through history carrying that promise that their descendants would be as the sands of the sea, the grains of sand on the beach, and an innumerable number. Yes. Yes. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath had let, uh, left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been made unto Gomorrah. What was the, the result to Sodom and Gomorrah? Are you fellas putting your hand up for some reason? I? Oh, I'm a little bit slow. Yes, we'll stop soon. Sodom and Gomorrah, what happened there? Destroyed. Destroyed. What shall we say then? Verse 30, that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. True? Yes. But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Well, there he's giving the uh, vice versa. Wherefore, question mark, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumblest at that stumbling stone. Stumbling stone? In Christianity, what's the stumbling stone? To whom is he a stumbling stone? To the Jewish heritage. Yeah. Isn't it odd that the people that he came to save specifically Treat him as a stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offence, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Where do you stand today? What's your attitude to this stumbling block? Are you a Gentile? Are you a, a Gentile converted spiritual Christian? Spiritual Israel? Is there a stumbling block that stops you from becoming a, a better person? Is it the commandments? Is, is it the history of Jesus being killed and so on? 